what we're going to be looking at here is impairment of goodwill and we're going to be testing and in this example recording a loss here on goodwill. Now goodwill is created here when one company buys another and it's really the excess of the purchase cost over the fair value of the net assets received here. So uh, we're going to look at this example here where Corporation A will purchase Corporation B here for $760,000 and then it's agreed here between Corp A and Corp B that the land that they're buying here is undervalued by $100,000 thousand dollars and the equipment is overvalued by ten thousand dollars. So what Corporation A will be buying is the what's on the balance sheet here of Corporation B. So Corporation B would have recorded its assets and its liabilities here at their book value but we have to adjust or assess the fair value here for both the assets and liabilities here to determine the goodwill that's involved here. So what we have to do is we have to adjust everything up to its fair value here. So the only changes we'd have here for the land, uh, the book value was $140,000. It was undervalued by $100,000. So its fair value would have to be adjusted up here to $240,000. And then the only other adjustment was through equipment. It was overvalued by $10,000. Book was $350,000. So we'd have to adjust it down here to $340,000. So now we have determined the fair value here for our assets. And then uh, we also have to determine a fair value for our liabilities sitting over here. But uh, our book and our fair value are the same for this example. So we have total liabilities of $700,000. And then going back to our assets here, if we total everything up at their fair value, our new to uh, uh, fair value of assets here was $1,240,000. So now knowing our purchase price here, uh, we can determine our goodwill here. So let's go down here again and again, goodwill is the excess of the purchase cost over the fair value. So we have to determine the fair value of the net assets. So it's really the assets here at their fair value less liabilities at their fair value. So our assets at their fair value were $1,240,000 that we were showing up here and then the uh, fair value of the liabilities was $700,000. So the difference gives us $540,000. That's the fair value of the net assets. Now to determine the goodwill here. We know the, uh, the price that was paid here uh, by Corporation A to buy Corporation B is $760,000. So uh, looking at uh, and then we would take the fair value of the net assets and compare it to the price paid here. Fair value of net assets $540,000. So the difference gives us goodwill here of $220,000. So we can go back up here and really plug in our goodwill here and that's the original amount here at the purchase date of $220,000. So total assets plus goodwill total amount here would be $1,460,000. Okay let's go down here again and look at recording goodwill. Again, remember goodwill is the excess of the purchase cost over the fair value of the net assets received here. And two here, internally generated goodwill should not be capitalized. Three, purchase goodwill is recorded only when the entire business is purchased. In this case, the entire business was purchased. Uh, Corporation B or A purchased all of Corporation B here. And point four here, goodwill is not amortized. It must be tested annually for impairment and written down if it has decreased in value and recognized as an expense on the income income statement. And this is what we're going to be doing here. This is what we're going to be doing uh, looking at the write down of the goodwill here because of an impairment. And point five here, you adjust goodwill uh, carrying value only when it's impaired. It just sits on the books here and you can only adjust it when you have an impairment here. So let's go look at our how we calculate our impairment here. So impairment of goodwill is really a two-step process. Step one here. First compare the fair value of the reporting unit to its carrying amount including goodwill here. So you would be adding in the goodwill that was involved here into the carrying amount. And uh, what we're going to have to do here uh, we reassess this each year here. So we have to determine the fair value each year here and also adjust for any carrying amount here um, each year here. And then the goodwill is what was sitting originally here in the account or what would be sitting in the account based after any adjustments. So first here, uh, if the fair value exceeds the carrying amount of the net assets, including goodwill, then goodwill is not impaired. And again, remember, we have to adjust their fair value or re 
recalculate our fair value and our net assets each year here. And B here, if the fair value were less than the carrying amount of the net assets plus goodwill, then you would perform the second step to determine any impairment here. So uh, for example here, just say two years later here, we reassessed uh, this business unit B here, let's say, to, uh, to its fair value of $1,200,000. And then we its carrying value, we reassessed that here, or recalculated that here to be $1,270,000. And that was really the net assets of $1,050,000 plus the original goodwill that we had recorded here at $220,000. So you can see we have a loss here. Fair value is less than the carrying value here. So now we can proceed here to steps two here. Um, and this is where we would be just taking and looking at uh, determine our implied value of goodwill here. So we take the fair value of the reporting unit here at at this test date here. That was $1,200,000. And then we would compare it to the net identifiable assets excluding goodwill. This is where we wouldn't be including that $220,000 in goodwill. We'd be excluding it at this point. We'd only be taking the net assets here, less the goodwill at $1,050,000. So you can see here, uh, the goodwill here, the fair value is still greater than the net identifiable assets here, excluding goodwill. So we have implied uh, value of goodwill here at $150,000. So now we can determine any loss on an impairment here. So the implied value of goodwill here is $150,000. But the carrying amount of goodwill that we had originally here was $220,000. So you can see we have a difference here of $70,000. Implied value of goodwill is less than the carrying amount here by $70,000. So we have a loss here on impairment. So now we can record the loss of this goodwill impairment. Again, goodwill here is sitting on the balance sheet and it's really a valuation account here. So the original amount here was a, a debit amount here for $220,000 and now we have to recognize this loss here. So we'd be crediting, it, crediting in our goodwill account here for $70,000 so that leaves us a balance here of $150,000 in our on our goodwill account here and our valuation account here for goodwill. Now we'd re recognize this impairment loss here for goodwill on our income statement. So we'd be debiting that here for seventy thousand dollars. All right. So we have taken care of this. Uh, we've had a loss here on our on an impairment of goodwill and we recorded it. So let's just go over this uh, process here one more time. This two-step process. First, compare the fair value of the reporting unit. And remember, you have to reassess whatever the fair value is at the date that you're doing your this annual test here. And then uh, you would, again, compare the fair value of the reporting unit and the carrying amount too. That has to be readjusted for whatever the carrying amount, including the goodwill. Well, the goodwill was in this case is what was sitting on the books. We hadn't changed any of that, but you would include the goodwill here. Now, if the fair value exceeds the carrying amount of net assets, including goodwill, then goodwill is not impaired. But if the opposite is true here, or fair value is less than the carrying amount of net assets, again, plus goodwill, then you perform the second test here. And that's simply just looking at here. You have to determine your implied fair value of goodwill. That's the fair value of the reporting unit uh, and compare that to the net of I net identifiable assets excluding goodwill yet can include the goodwill here you just take the new value a new carrying value here of your assets and your liabilities and that will give you the implied value of goodwill and then you can just simply compare that to whatever the carrying amount of goodwill is here so if the implied uh, amount here is less than the carrying amount then you'd have a loss and then you'd go and recognize that loss here both uh, to your goodwill account you would have to adjust that here for the impairment and you'd also recognize an impairment loss here on your income statement. Debit that by the amount here of the uh, loss on an impairment. All right, so that takes care of our goodwill testing and an impairment here on a loss on goodwill.